Good day everyone. Today we will be talking about the Third Republic. The Third Republic of the Philippines was inaugurated on July 4, 1946. It marked the culmination of the peaceful campaign for Philippine independence. The two landmarks of which were the enactment of the Jones Law in 1916 in which the U.S. Congress pledged independence for the Philippines once Filipinos have proven their capability for self-government, and the Philippine Independence Act of 1934, popularly known as Tidings McDuffie, which put in place a 10-year transition period during which the Philippines had Commonwealth status. Manuel A. Rojas he was the last president of the Commonwealth, which had a term from May 28, 1946 to July 4, 1946, and the first president of the Third Republic of the Philippines from July 4, 1946 to April 15, 1948. In an effort to solve the massive socio-economic problems of the period, President Rojas reorganized the government and proposed a wide-sweeping legislative program. Among the undertakings of the Third Republic's initial year were the establishment of the Rehabilitation Finance Corporation, which would be reorganized in 1958 as the Development Bank of the Philippines, the creation of the Department of Foreign Affairs, and the organization of the Foreign Service through Executive Order No. 18, the GI Bill of Rights, for Filipino veterans and the revision of taxation laws to increase government revenues. President Rojas moved to strengthen sovereignty by proposing a central bank for the Philippines to administer the Philippine banking system which was established by Republic Act No. 265. The Rojas administration also pioneered the foreign policy of the Republic Vice President El P. Jocrino was appointed Secretary of Foreign Affairs. General Carlos P. Romulo, as permanent representative of the Philippines to the United Nations, helped shape the country's international identity in the newly established stage for international diplomacy and relations. During the Rojas administration, the Philippines established diplomatic ties with foreign countries and gained membership to international entities such as the United Nations General Assembly, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, the World Health Organization, or WHO, the International Labor Organization, or ILO, and others. El Pijo Quirino, the second president of the Third Republic of the Philippines. After Manuel Rojas died, from a heart attack from April 17, 1948 to November 10, 1953. President Quirino established the Action Committee on Social Amelioration through Administrative Order No. 68 in order to efficiently promote the welfare of citizens in the rural districts. He established the Social Security Study Commission by virtue of Executive Order No. 150 to investigate socio-economic problems of the working class and formulate legislation developing social welfare. The Labor Management Advisory Board, established by Executive Order No. 158, formulated labor policies and conducted studies on the ways and means of preventing, minimizing, and reconciling labor disputes. The Agricultural Credit and Cooperative Financing Administration, established by Republic Act No. 8021, assisted farmers in securing credit as well as developing cooperative associations to efficiently market their agricultural commodities. And on the third president of the Third Republic of the Philippines, his term from December 30, 1953 to March 17, 1957 best known for successfully defeating the communist-led Hok Balahap, or the Hok Movement, idol the masses, champion of democracy, and 
freedom fighter and that is Ramon Magsaysay. Among the accomplishments of the Magsaysay administration were the Social Security Law of 1954 or Republic Act No. 1161 in an effort to solve the problems of communism and insurgency. President Magsaysay sued to protect the farmers through the creation of laws such as the Agricultural Tenancy Act of the Philippines or the Public Act No. 1199, the Land Reform Act of 1955 through Republic Act No. 1400, the formation of the Court of Agrarian Relations through Republic Act No. 1267, and the National Resettlement and Rehabilitation Administration or NARA through Republic Act No. 1160. The administration achieved victory over insurgents with the surrender of group leader Luis Taro in 1954. Magsaysay's term, which was to end on December 30, 1957, was cut short by a plane crash on March 16, 1957. Magsaysay left Manila for Cebu City, where he spoke at three educational institutions. That same night, at about 1 a.m., he boarded the presidential plane Neon Pinatubo, a C-47, heading back to Manila in the early morning hours of March 17. The plane was reported missing. By late afternoon, newspapers had reported the airplane had crashed on Mount Manungal in Cebu and that 36 of the 56 aboard were killed. The actual number on board was 25 including Magsaysay. Only newspaperman Nistor Mata survived. Vice President Carlos Garcia, who was on an official visit to Australia at the time, assumed the presidency to serve out the last eight months of Magsaysay's term. Fourth President of the Third Republic of the Philippines Carlos P. Garcia from March 18, 1957 to December 30, 1961. Famous for his austerity program and policy, he maintained the strong tradition ties with the United States and sued closer relations with non-communist Asian countries. The Garcia administration promoted the Filipino First policy, whose focal point was to regain economic independence a national effort by Filipinos to obtain major and dominant participation in their economy. The administration campaigned for the citizens' support in patronizing Filipino products and services and implemented import and currency controls favorable for Filipino industries. In connection with the government goal of self-sufficiency was the austerity program, which President Garcia described in his first State of the Nation address as more work, more thrift, more productive investment, and more efficiency that aim to mobilize national savings. The anti graft and Corrupt Practices Act through Republic Act No. 301 aimed to prevent corruption and promote honesty and public trust. Another achievement of the Garcia administration was the Bolan Serrano Agreement of 1959 which shortened the term of lease of the U.S. military bases in the country from the previous 99 to 25 years. Fifth President of the Third Republic of the Philippines, Diosdado Macapagal, from December 30, 1961 to December 30, 1965. Poet, politician, lawyer, diplomat, statesman, economist, and intellectual. Born to poverty but rose due to diligence and brilliance. Best known as the champion of the common man and the poor boy from Lubao. Among the laws passed during the Makapaga administration were Republic Act No. 3844 or the Agricultural Land Reform Code, an act that established the Land Bank of the Philippines. Republic Act No. 3466 which established the Emergency Employment Administration, Republic Act No. 3518, which established the Philippine Veterans Bank, Republic Act 3470, which established the National Cottage Industries Development Authority, or NACEDA, to organize 
revive, and promote the establishment of local cottage industries, and the Republic Act No. 4156, which established the Philippine National Railways, or PNR, to operate the National Railroad and Transways. The administration lifted foreign exchange controls as part of the control program in an attempt to promote national economic stability and growth. On May 12, 1962, President Diosdado Macapagal issued Presidential Proclamation No. 28, which declared June 12 a special public holiday throughout the Philippines in commemoration of our people's declaration of their inherent and inalienable right to freedom and independence. On August 4, 1964, Republic Act No. 4166 renamed July 4 holiday as Philippine Republic Day proclaimed June 12 as Philippine Independence Day and enjoined all citizens of the Philippines to observe the latter with befitting rights. Ferdinand Marcos presidency started in 1965 to 1986. His first term from 1965 to 1969 had a slogan of this nation can be great again built different roads, bridges, trains, introduction of medical rice, and held the Manila Summit Conference in 1966. On his second term, from 1969 to 1972, Philippines suffered economic crisis, rampant graft and corruption, gross violation of 1935 constitution, and massive communist threat. On his second term, was also founded communist groups like Kabataang Makabayan in 1964, Samahan ng Demokratikong Kabataan also, became the vanguards of 1970, the so-called First Quarter Storm, and the Communist Party of the Philippines adheres Marxist, Leninism, and Mao thought. Then, during his term also, the organization of the New People's Army and the National Democratic Front. So in 1971, Constitutional Convention happened through Republic of 6132 by June 1, 1971, opened by Senator President Hel Puyat and Speaker Cornelio Villarreal, headed by Carlos Garcia and later just at the Makapagal. Several delegates walked out the session after Marcos' speech. Liberal Party's proclamation rally on August 21, 1971 at Plaza Miranda was disturbed by explosion of two grenades, eight persons killed, and 120 people wounded. It was during his term for this lot of scandals. Few hours after the Plaza Miranda bombing, Marcos issued the Proclamation No. 880 that suspends the writ of habeas corpus and restored the writ to the country on January 11, 1972. More details about the Marcos and the coming of the Fourth Republic. Stay safe everyone.